excited to start this knitting project today. I first made this cowl and crochet, absolutely love the color work and wanted to do a knit mimic. For this pattern, I will be using the Red Heart Unforgettable. This is a medium worsted four weight yarn. Same weight for this yarn. This is the Red Heart Soft Baby Steps. These are the two combinations I feel like will work best to have a solid color and then a multicolor that's going to change colors as we go and is absolutely beautiful. Then I will be using these knitting needles. Circulars are best for this project. We will be working flat for some of this and then also in the round. This is a five millimeter, which is also size eight. Um, and it definitely needs some cords. I might use a couple of different sizes depending on how this gets going. You will also need some scissors, a tapestry needle to weave in those ends, and of course a stitch marker is often key when we start working in the round. So let's go ahead and get started. For this video, the color A will be our solid color white, and the color B will be our variegated pretty yarn. So we're starting with color A, which is the white. You can choose a different one if you want. This could also look good with different solid colors. And I am simply going to be doing a long tail cast on of three stitches. After casting on three stitches, I am simply going to just knit 10 rows. So knit 10 rows of those three stitches. So after knitting those 10 rows, we're going to rotate our work 90 degrees to the right, and we're going to be working along this edge. We will be sticking, picking up five stitches from this edge, and we can see we've got some bumps here that will help us out. Now the difficult thing sometimes about picking up from edges is just where to insert your hook and what to pick up. So just pay attention to those ridges and you can also insert your left needle into the area you're picking up to kind of help hold it open while you complete that stitch. And hopefully you don't split your yarn like I just did. There we go. So there's one and now I'm going to do another one. And we're just simply going to do five of these across here. So after picking up those five stitches, now it's time to rotate our work one more time, 90 degrees, and we're going to pick up stitches from our starting edge. Now these ones sometimes feel a little bit more fickly simply because we don't have any special ridges or anything to go from. So just do the best that you can and pick up three stitches from that starting cast on edge. So now that we've picked up those stitches, we have 11 stitches on our needles and it is time to place our stitch markers. I've gone ahead, ahead and grabbed different ones than the one I showed in the video. I found that the little charms were sticking in the yarn, so I'm going with something a bit more simplistic. Now to place our stitch markers, we're going to start each row with our yarn in the front and then we're going to slip the first stitch and then you can go ahead and take your yarn to the back. Then we'll knit two stitches and then this is where we are going to place our first marker. Now we're going to purl the next two stitches and place our next marker. Then we're going to purl one stitch and place our next stitch marker. Then purl two stitches and place our last stitch marker. And then we are simply going to knit those last three stitches. We didn't change our stitch count. We just did a setup row to get those stitch markers placed. Now this is where we're going to be increasing on this row. We will start the row the same way by slipping with the yarn in front and knitting the first two stitches after that. And then we are going to slip our first marker 
yarn over and knit the next stitch. This is our right side, so we're knitting. And we're gonna knit to the next marker. Then we're going to make one right. To make one right, we're going to take our left needle from the back to the front through that horizontal bar that's between the stitches. And then we're going to knit into the front of that stitch. And that is a make one right. I also have a video on my blog if you wanna see that a bit slower. Then we're going to slip a stitch, stitch marker, <laughs> sorry, we're gonna slip the stitch marker, knit one, Slip the stitch marker again, and then this is where we are going to make one left. So we're gonna use this horizontal bar again, and to make one left, we're going to insert our needle from the front to the back, and then knit into the back of that stitch. So now we've made one left. Then we're going to knit to the next marker, yarn over, slip the marker, and knit the last three and we have increased from 11 to 15 stitches. So that does four stitches of increasing. Now for row two, the wrong side, we will start the same way with a yarn in the front, and this will be done in purl stitches for this row other than our garter tab edge. We will slip the first stitch, take our yarn back to the back and knit two stitches. This will be the wrong side of our work. Then we're going to slip this marker and purl to the next stitch marker. Then we're going to slip that stitch marker and purl one, slip the next stitch marker, and then purl to the next stitch marker. And then we will slip this last stitch marker and knit the last three stitches. We are going to be repeating row one and row two for our next steps. So I'm going to repeat rows one and two for an additional two times. And every single time we do this two row repeat, it will increase by four stitches. Now for rows seven and rows eight for this pattern, we will be starting to pull in our color B, which is our beautiful um, yarn that will change colors for us. So I'm just gonna simply find the end and we're gonna be working row seven with this color. So now I've joined my yarn. I just like to do a little knot and bring these together. It just makes things a little bit cleaner for me. And now I'm going to just keep working in the same pattern we've been working in. This will be an increase row. And I'm going to slip my first stitch and then knit the next two. And we'll be working in this color, but we're still doing the same um, increasing that we have been doing. And we're going to be working row seven and eight with this new color. Now, if you don't wanna weave in a ton of ends, you can choose to carry your yarn up the sides, but now I'm switching back after doing row seven and eight in that um, color B. I'm back to the color A, and I'm going to be working um, some rows again in the same way, and we will be doing some increasing and building upon this. So for rows nine through 14, I am simply repeating rows one and two for a total of six times. And that's just going to be um, building our stripes and our solid sections. So you will go ahead and repeat rows seven through 14 until you have a stitch count of 151 stitches. So at this point, we have completed all of the rows and it's time to start working in the round. So I have 151 stitches at this point and it's time for me to work this next round, which will join at the end of the round and stop increasing four stitches per, per, per round, but we're gonna go to increasing two stitches per round. But before we get to that, I wanna talk about the chart. If you're comfortable working from charts, that is awesome too. Um, there's written instructions as well if you prefer that. I just kinda wanna go over this chart so we kinda see and know what's going on. This is our beautiful color work. It's a very wide chart. Um, I can break it down into a repeat, but I definitely still want you to see uh, where we're headed in a full view. 
Our chart will always be worked from right to left for every round and from bottom to top. We'll see these triangle areas of white in here. Those are no stitches. The reason why they're there is I need space as this chart increases for the triangle and those are no stitches until they become stitches. Then you'll notice in the center we have this solid line. That is just our center stitch. That will make it really easy to see where we need to do our increasing. You'll notice along here we have a lot of our increase symbols. These areas here are the only places that we will now be increasing. We're done increasing by that garter stitch tab. And in on the back of this where we end a row and start a row, it will look seamless in our color work. So the repeat works out really nice on the back of it. And then we've got our increasing on the front here. So there are only, I say only, oh, it's over here. There are only 33 rows, rounds for this color work, but it is a lot of color work within those 33 rounds. So it's really important to keep track of what row you're on and how everything's working up and that you're carrying your yarn appropriately. So I'm going to show you round one where we're going to start at the bottom right of this chart. And we're going to start with knitting nine in our color B. Our, and after knitting the nine in the color B, then it will be two in the color A and so forth. So let's do that for this round and then we will keep on going for the rest of this chart. So I just want to know I'm only going to be showing the first two rounds from this chart on camera. And then after that, it's going to be for you to work up and enjoy each round of this color work. So we're going to start this round by knitting nine stitches with the color B and we will be removing our stitch markers for the garter tab areas, but we're going to keep our stitch markers on our V point. So we're going to start by knitting the first nine and then removing this stitch marker as we go. And also remembering that when we are knitting this many stitches in a row, it's really important to make our floats short on the back. We don't want to be floating across uh, nine stitches. So to do that, I take my color A and I wrap it around my needle. Then I wrap my color B and then I unwrap my color A and that will allow it to be trapped on the back of my work and create a float so I'm not carrying it very far. I don't like to carry my yarn for more than three stitches, especially working in a worsted weight yarn. So just remember as you're working, simply trap that yarn and then keep on going. For this round, there will be large portions of the color B to work and we'll be working a lot of stitches across. So it's really important to pay attention to your color A and not forget that we will need to trap that every so often for those beautiful floats on the back of your work. So work in the color work pattern until you get to the first stitch marker. Now I'm to my very first stitch marker at this B point and what I need to do next is make one right. We're still going to be making one right when we get to this stitch marker. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with my color B as indicated in the chart and the written pattern. And then I'm going to slip my marker. The next one will be also a color B for that center stitch slip the next marker and then our next stitch is a make one left and it is in our color A. So we'll want to be sure to do that as well. So we're still increasing at the triangle point here. Um, we're going to leave those stitch markers in because that's what we need to do. And then now I'm going to keep going in my color work pattern until I get to the beginning of the round. All right, so now that I'm getting back to the beginning of the round here, so we're at our stitch marker we had right before the garter tab. We can take that one out, but keep it close by because we're gonna use that as the beginning of the round stitch marker now. I'm going to work the last three stitches in this round. I'm gonna go ahead and float my color A on that last one. And now that we are finished with round one, it's time to start with round two, but this is where we want to place our beginning of round marker. And we're just going to keep working in the round here. So we're going to go right into the next stitch from our left hand needle. So for round two, we start with two of color B. And then one of color A 
and we're just going to keep working in the stitch from the chart, the stitch color work from the chart or from the written instructions. Once we work a few rounds here, we'll see um, this really start to, to work up to be this beautiful color work pattern. And we can use our tail end if we feel like we want to tighten up our join at the very end of this and secure that area where we start to work in the round, we can do so. But we have our beginning of round marker and we're just going to keep working this color work and increasing every single time we get to that point, just as the instructions state. And then we're just going to keep working this beautiful color work and watch it work up to this stunning work of art. So I'm going to let you go work on this color work. There's uh, no more techniques I really have to show you. It's just simply working in the round again and again and again. So I'll see you when you get back with that color work portion. So after completing the color work section, now we're going to go ahead and fasten off our color A and we're just going to work in our color B for the remainder of this pattern. We're going to want to do a little bit of knit and purl stitches so that this bottom doesn't curl and it sits quite nicely. But the first thing we're going to do after completing the color work is we are going to do one. Now after completing that one round of solid knit, we're going to go ahead and start to do some two by two ribbing. So we're going to knit the first two stitches in the round and then purl the next two. And that's the repeat we're going to do all the way around. And when we get to our increases, we're still going to increase at those stitch markers the same way that we have been doing. So simply working in this solid color, do a two by two, knit two, knit two purl two all the way around while still increasing at your stitch markers. Now after our first round of knit two, purl two, we're going to continue to work in that stitch pattern and we're going to start our next round by knitting two and then purling two. And so we're always going to be working the stitch from the round below the same. So if it's a knit stitch, then knit that next one. And if it's a purl stitch that's next, purl that purl stitch. You're gonna follow that stitch pattern all the way to the increases into those stitch markers and we're still going to be doing those increases just following the stitch pattern from the round below. Now after doing that uh, two purl two knit type ribbing around the bottom to make this edge not curl as much, it's time for us to go ahead and bind off and I'm going to bind off in pattern and be taking out any stitch markers as I go. So I'll knit the first two and then I'll take the first stitch of this round over the second and drop it and then purl and do the same. So we're just going to be working the stitches in pattern, but taking them off the needles as we go. Now I did still increase on the point of this as I bound off just so I didn't have any um, tucking on that front um, v area. So we'll work this all the way around until all the stitches are bound off. If you don't get in a little mess there like I did, and then it will be time to block. Now blocking for this one is going to be very important. You'll want to do that so that the stitches straighten out and look really nice and it will be a really nice wearable. Now I've made another one with this mellow spun in gray and this beautiful Mary Maxim prism yarn. This is such a fun yarn to use. I highly recommend it. I think it works great for this project. It's what I use for my crochet version. And you can see where we've got a nice point here and this is bound off. I have not blocked it yet. I'm about to do so with both of them at the same time. But this is such a fun knit pattern that works up pretty quick. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope you join me again soon for our next project.